All right, so we got our power and ground checks today. So we got common power, common ground, spliced out, three ground inputs on J1, three power inputs on J1. So let's get that. Uh, come on now. Uh, that's probably good enough. So we'll get that guy up here. And we have some of the worst piercing probes ever. So we got 12 volt in. And then we got our fancy pro loader circuit tester here. Hooked up the ground. And we're just gonna verify our load, 12.07. Alrighty, 12 on that one. So we're all right there. There we go, 12.3. We're gonna do that, 12.05. So our powers are good. Now we're going to check our grounds. And to do that, we're going to switch over to battery bus. Lights, that's about a 4 amp draw. We got a 0 0.07 volt drop. I'm cool with that. Got our second ground wire here. Like I said, these are all spliced together, so it might be a little redundant, but there we are. Point one two. It's a little higher than I'd like to see. Let's try that again, make sure we got a good connection. A little high, but it is what it is. I'm not super concerned about that. And then our last one here. Alright, what do we got here? If I can get in there. This is where having the really nice uh, Pomona ones would come in handy. And I have an four or five, of, or I guess six of them on order right now. So, this is what it is. I gotta make do with what I have here. So, 0 0.07. And we got like. So powers and grounds are good. So what we're going to be able to do here is probably go through and just to confirm whether it's definitely here. We might check a couple inputs. We might do an ECU donor procedure. You know what? We'll probably do an ECU donor procedure before I call an ECM on it. Uh, so we'll do that next. Let me get everything set up. All right, so we already did our power and ground checks there. Everything's good. Uh, last thing we want to do is check to see why, one last thing, why we're still inhibited inhibited. So the only thing that will inhibit it regen from occurring is either pressing this button, which will illuminate and then inhibit on the computer, or if there is a failure code within the ECU for 
EGR valve, air throttle, uh, map sensor, basically any management short of coolant temperature and a, a couple other ones. Uh, SCV valve, suction control valve, which can't quite see, but it's all the way shoved back up in there. So we don't have any of them. So we're right here at the ICC, our signal wire going in to see if we are shorted by any means and we're not so what happens is we press this button and it'll send out a momentary 5 volt signal so let's see if we can get this there we are I'm pressing holding it but it's just a momentary 5 volt which will then switch on and off and yet we have no change so next, oh, we're going to be going through a donor ECU procedure. Well, we're going to go try the easy way first, which is we're going to swap this one in for this one. We're not going to reprogram the VIN number or anything else. We're just going to plug it in and see if it remains the same because I have no information at this point. So I'm on a out on a limb assuming there is a software issue here because this input comes from here into the ICC and then gets sent over CAN bus to there so all right so just to draw it out and where my mind's at so this is our inhibit switch which is the only thing that will prevent this ECU short of a trouble code which we don't have uh, keep this ECU from not inhibiting regen. So what we have is, as we already proved, a little five volt momentary signal going to the ICC. So it's just gonna be a little square wave if you were to graph it. Anyway, five volt goes into the ICC and then it goes over your CAN network as a coded CAN message to the ECU to tell the ECU what to do. Now this would be one in a million times where it would actually be nice to be able to decode the CAN bus data, know the message for regen inhibited, regen inhibit message, and be able to, that's being sent here, and be able to tell if this is a valid message or not whether it's within the ECU and the ECU is just not reading it right because we already scoped all the CAN data, that's good. But if we could tell if this specific message was getting here and being interpreted properly, which we know it's displaying improperly and we know it will not allow it to go into regen short of forcing it in via service. So we can assume that whatever this is getting, it won't let it do it, but is it getting bad data from here? Or is it interpreting the data bad here? That would be uh, if anybody watched the Pico Q&A about CAN bus decoding and all that. Uh, a lot of people were wondering when that would ever be useful. This is one instance case where I personally would find it useful because I have no service documentation to back up any of this. I'm flying on my own. Nobody's ever seen it before. So it's going to be fun. So we got our old cruddy dusty one out. Um, no corrosion, pin fretting, bent pins, anything that I can see. Uh, same with the connector side. These are just kind of a pain to do one-handed. So uh, we threw our donor in there, which I pulled off another machine. We're gonna key on. Uh, only code this may throw, which it didn't right away because we didn't fire it up, is a VIN mismatch. Yes, there is module security in these. So you guys are coming with me. Let's see if we can get this halfway decent red. Uh, so fingers crossed here. I don't condone just swapping ECUs or any kind of parts in or out without proving it, but this is quite literally the only way we have to prove the assumption at this point. So get some of this dust off of here, maybe that'll work a little better. Uh, 
All right. So let's go down to our data points again. And where are we? There we are. Filter cleaning, interlock, and inhibit. There we are. And just to prove operation, if we can, let's hit the button once, and we are inhibited. So we're gonna watch, if we can, I can get you guys there. I'm gonna key off here. Power's down, and we're gonna key right back on, self-check, light goes out, and we're back to not inhibited. Now we're gonna take our park brake off, and see how we're inhibited there, and then we're gonna pull our park brake off, and not inhibited. And there we are. Um, not my favorite way to go about this, but we have proved that it is, in fact, an ECU problem. It's not a CAN message from here being sent in properly. It is, in fact, something software, hardware, something's glitched inside. Um, yeah, don't know what to tell you other than that. I wish I had a smoking gun, but that's about as close as you're going to get.